Before we get straight into the podcast, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors, D Kirby GA Star. Declan Kirby GA Star Championship Journey. It's a series of GA team children's books written by primary school teacher and GA coach Michael Egan. You can check it out in the link in the description down below, of course, as well. Follow the trials and tribulations of Declan Kirby and his team at Smith Green Gaelic Football Club, recently formed a promising GA team. The book is now available in Easton's and all good bookshops, so check it out in the description down below. And let's get straight into it what's the story lads welcome back to GA fan tv i hope you're all keeping wonderfully well my name is aaron and of course the national football league is coming closer to its conclusion this weekend we have the national football league semi-finals and of course we have the relegation playoffs taking place across the four different divisions in the national football league and of course as always i'm here with the predictions and preview to give my take on this weekend's games and to discuss who I think will end up winning, who will end up getting promoted, relegated, and so on. Of course, this is just the semi-finals because for whatever reason, the GEA decided we're not going to have league finals because they decided to schedule them on the exact same weekend as the start of the championship. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Let's just schedule the league finals uh, in the same weekend as the opening weekend. The championship, nice one, you know, brilliant. It makes perfect sense. I mean, look, listen, I know it's tough with scheduling, and you know you do feel sorry for the GA in many ways because obviously you have the club season coming up club players want to get back there's so much going on you've ladies football kamogi every you know they're trying to condense everything into one but i'm just not too sure how they've managed to make this decision like it just doesn't make any sense at all that some teams will be able to play in their league final and have that bit of success have that day out maybe in crow park and then there's some teams that won't get that because of the fact that they were scheduled early in the championship. It just, it really doesn't make any sense at all. And it really, really does frustrate me, in all honesty. The fact that, you know, we could have had Dublin and Kerry in a league final and then potentially in an all Ireland final. We could have had a trilogy of classic games between Dublin and Kerry. And you know what? In Crow Park, we could have had Dublin, Tyrone, Dublin, Kerry. I don't know. Maybe don't have it in Crow Park, have it somewhere else. But you would have had some fans back. And it's just a little bit frustrating in all honesty because the league has been absolutely brilliant this year and I feel like the finals have just been completely disregarded but look listen we'll crack straight into it we won't take too much time discussing that otherwise we will be here for absolute ever but yeah it is just quite frustrating that some league finals and semi-finals can take place unless they somehow meet in the championship which for some teams just is impossible because of them being in different provinces and whatnot but We'll crack on anyway and we'll have a look at Division 4 first of all and make our way up. Obviously there's no relegation playoffs in Division 4 so we only have the promotion playoffs. We have Antrim going up against Waterford and we have Carlo going up against Loud. Antrim and Waterford first of all taking place at Fratter Field in Waterford. It's an interesting one this one because actually Waterford and Antrim both played each other actually as a matter of fact at the end of the league last season in Division 4. At that point it was pretty much ruled out that either side was going to get promoted. Antrim still had a slim chance. The game was actually supposed to be taking place in Antrim and it got refixed for Dundalk I believe and now this time around it's Antrim who have to travel the entire way to Waterford without the game being refixed somewhere in between. Just an interesting point of view to take 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 it what you will but yeah it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a win for antrim in my opinion i can see them comfortably beating waterford look listen fair play to waterford for getting themselves in this position we've all spoken enough about wexford and, and some of the issues there but you've got to give waterford a lot of credit they really dug deep against wexford they fought hard the likes of connor murray jason curry as well who I thought was fantastic in that game. You've obviously got Dylan Geary, who's been very bright. So Waterford deserve a lot of credit. And if they get promoted, it's a phenomenal achievement for, for Shane Ronane coming in on his first season. And to be fair to Waterford, like there's a lot of teams in Division 4 that play defensive, that get men behind the ball. And look, listen, I've said before that I've no problem really with defensive systems, but it is a breath of fresh air in many ways to see a team like Waterford playing on the front foot, playing attacking. And you could see against Wexford that they duly got their award for it. As for Antrim... They've been brilliant so far on the under end of McGinley. They really, really have. You know, they've really taken things to the next level in terms of putting themselves top of the division, putting themselves in a perfect position now to go up to the division three. I mean, they've been a team that's been knocking on the door for promotion for quite some time, but really after last year and that devastating defeat to Wicklow, I could have never imagined that Antrim would have the players to turn it around. I thought they were too reliant on the likes of Paddy Cunningham and 
Paddy McBride and look at this and they've been brilliant players for Antrim down the years but I was wondering where were the other players going to come through and to be fair to them they found it in Dermot McAleese at wing back Mark Jordan at corner back has been fantastic and um, you've also got who's the other player you've got there or Oren Eastwood I thought has been brilliant as well so Antrim for me will win this one quite comfortably six points you've then got Carlo and Leo taking place at Netwatch Cullen Park and another very close game another very interesting game to worth keeping an eye on in my opinion because I think this game will be close and Loud are coming in on the back of a lot of momentum really after the last two wins. A devastating win over Sligo in many ways, winning 318 to 114. I think a lot of people would have had that game a lot closer considering how competitive Sligo were in the first two games, getting a win over Leitrim and obviously running Antrim very, very close as well. And as for Carlo, impressive stuff, you know, getting the opening two wins, digging deep against Wexford as well. When it looked like they were going to be beaten, they managed to find a way back with John Murphy at centre-back turning out to be the hero, hitting 1-1 on the day. Um, so for Carlo, they're coming in with a bit of momentum. They've won their two games, 100% winning record. Uh, Dara Foley's been very bright in midfield. You've obviously got Paul Broderick in there, who's always kind of been a top star for Carlo. They're playing on the front foot under Niall Carew. They're playing expansive football. They've got rid of the defensive system that they had under Turlock O'Brien, and they've really, they're really going for it. As for Loud, I'll be honest, I haven't watched too much of Loud in Division Four as much as I would have liked. But one thing I've picked up on is obviously Samuel Roy, who would normally play a fourteen, is playing at number eleven now, which is interesting. You know, he's such a, a talented footballer, and clearly Mickey Hart probably wants him to have more influence in the game. And you can see not only is he kicking points now as well, he's adding goals to his game as well. I think he had two, three. I believe in the game versus Sligo so very impressive footballer is Samuel Roy you've got Kieran Keenan who's looked very bright as well Connor Grimes who's come in for Loud as well so they have a lot of very good talented footballers I can see them frustrating Carlo I'd imagine they'll sit back in this game play quite defensive try and hit Carlo on the counter attack and really there was times in that game where Wexford should have put Carlo to bed Carlo do have a couple of defensive frailties in there I expect Loud to capitalize on that and win by five points so we'll move on to division three and we'll start with the relegation playoffs and first up you've got Cavan versus Wicklow at Park Talty and you've also got Tipperary taking on Longford as well you know, mad situation for, for both Cavan and Tipperary, both coming into this season as champions of their province. Both of them in Division 3, which a lot of people couldn't get their heads around, and both could potentially be in Division 4 next year, which just sounds absolutely remarkable. I sh surely that's not going to happen, though. Surely Cavan and Tip are going to win their respective games. I think for Cavan, this is a game where they need to turn up. This is a game where they need to show what they can do, because we know they have the talent there. We know they have the quality in the likes of Grodd McKernan. Thomas Gallagher hasn't been fit enough. And, you know, should he should he play? He probably shouldn't, in all honesty. He should probably be wrapped in cotton wool in many ways for the Tyrone game. Because, clearly, he didn't look fit in the, in the game at all, really, against Derry. And they have talent there in Martin Riley. You've obviously got Patrick Faulkner, who's brilliant at getting forward. You've obviously got Patrick Lynch, who's come into the team as well. They should be beating Wicklow quite comfortably. Look, Wicklow... They've lost their three games. In the first two games, they showed a bit of spirit. In the last game, it was probably a little bit disappointing for them to, to be beaten in the way they did by Limerick. Um, beaten by quite a high scoreline, actually. And Limerick don't normally hit up as high scores as they do. So, for Wicklow, it's, pro it's back to the drawing board. I think their main focus now surely has to go on that Wexford game that obviously happens in a couple of weeks. And look, listen, with the state of Wexford at the moment, you know, I'd, I'd actually have Wicklow going into that game and getting the win and then playing Dublin in a game that they should win. Wait, what? But in all honesty, so Cavan should win this game in all honesty. They, they really should by a couple of points. So, I'm going to go with Cavan to win by six. It, sh it probably could be more... But I think Cavan should comfortably win this. I think Mickey Graham is going to lay into his troops for this game. Like, There's no way in any way whatsoever that Cavan should be going down to Division 4. So I reckon they'll win by 6. And as for Tipperary Longford, I actually think this game will be closer. Because I don't think Longford are as bad maybe as what the table suggested. I think you know they, they got an awful pace than by Derry. Fermanagh got the same pace than by Derry as well. Like let's be honest. They should have beaten Fermanagh. They were in front going into the closing few minutes. They were there to see the game out. And then they got beat, or then they conceded that late point by Sean Quigley. And they controlled the game for large parts. It was really only at the start of the game and the end of the game where Fermanagh really turned it up a notch. And Longford really probably could have won the game. Against Cavan, they were very competitive as well. 
Rian Brady caused uh, Cavan a lot of problems in that game. Darren Gallagher looks like quite a bright player as well. So I actually think Longford are going to give Tipperary a game here, you know. I don't think there's really going to be much in it. Maybe one or two points. So I think it will be a close game. I think there'll probably only be one or two points in it going into the going into the closing stages. I do fancy Tipperary to just edge it though because I think with Connor Sweeney in there, who's still been brilliant, let's be honest, for, for Tipperary so far. He's cracked up a, a number of scores. He's been in brilliant form. They haven't played Michael Quindlevin too much. I don't really know what the story is there, whether it's an injury or whether they're just keeping, whether they're resting him out of the championship. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I don't really know what's going on there. Philly Ryan's obviously come in, you know, he, he played for Dublin before, of course, and he's had family in Tipperary, so he's come into the team. I think Tipperary should get the job done here. I think they'll just about have enough for Longford. I do think Longford will cause them problems. They'll make it tough for them. And it wouldn't surprise me if Longford sneaked it. I'll be perfectly honest because I think the quality that Longford's playing in the, the Northern Division compared with the quality that uh, Tipperary are playing, you know, the quality's a lot higher, in my opinion, than Longford were playing. So, you know, playing obviously three Ulster teams, it's always going to be tough. You see how competitive Ulster is at the moment. So I think Tipperary will just about edge it. I'm going to go with two points, but it's definitely going to be close. So we'll move on to the playoffs, of course, in Division 3. And you've got Derry versus Limerick taking place in Leitrim. And you've also got Offaly, of course, taking on Fermanagh. I almost forgot that one there for a minute, but that's taking place in O'Connor Park. Uh, Derry, first of all, let's discuss them. Obviously, they're facing off against Limerick in a neutral venue because, for whatever reason, it's very confusing. Some games are in neutral venues, home stadiums, away stadiums. It's all a bit up in the air. But Derry and Limerick, first of all, uh, Derry should be winning this quite comfortably, I'd say. I mean, look, listen, as I said before, the quality in Division 3 North compared with the quality in Division 3 South is a lot higher. And I think Derry have had some tricky games in there. Like, you've seen Longford and Fermanagh be quite competitive. Cavan were obviously the Ulster champions last year. And Derry just comfortably dispatched all three teams. Cavan showed a bit of fight and fair play to them in the second half. But Derry really showed a lot of quality with Shane McGuigan who's a top-class forward, can kick off his left, his right. You've obviously got Connor Glass and Emma Bradley in midfield, a really good midfield pairing. Brendan Rodgers looked like he picked up an injury potentially in the uh, in the last game, so we'll have to see what happens. He's obviously a very good fullback there for Derry. So, you know, still a lot of work to do for Derry. I wouldn't go as far as I know some people have been kind of saying, and I've obviously had a video up saying our Derry dark horses for Ulster. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself with Derry just yet because we've seen this before where teams have looked very, very good and they come up against a top team and they get steamrolled. So, but Derry definitely do have the potential and coming up against a Limerick side that have done very well so far this year, coming up from Division 4 last year, they've really kicked on, they've got themselves in a brilliant position by being in a Division 3 playoff, but I think Derry will have too much. Look, I like the look of Danny Neville and Ian Corbett in defence for Limerick, but I think Derry will have too much. I think they'll they'll find a way through Limerick's defence and I think they'll pick them off comfortably with the likes of Shane McGuigan, and I think this will be comfortable for Derry, so I reckon they'll win this by seven points. As for Offaly and Fermanagh, look, listen, I think this will be a lot closer than people think. This is obviously taking place in O'Connor Park, and, well, to be fair, I don't think anyone really has Offaly winning this one, this game, you know, massively comfortably. Fermanagh, though, have shown so much fight this year. They've been one of the surprise teams, in my opinion, in the National Football League. Look, look, listen, they were in Division 2 last year. Offaly weren't in Division 2 last year. So, in many ways, Fermanagh should be getting back up to Division 2. You know, normally the team that gets relegated is the team that's going to be fighting to, to get promoted or to get back up there. But uh, Fermanagh, to be fair, they had a lot of changes, obviously, this year. A lot of players opting out, a lot of different things going on behind the scenes. Sean Quigley's come back into the team and been phenomenal. You know, it's been a mad situation with Sean Quigley altogether because a lot of people didn't even see him playing or potentially even being in the team. And he comes back and he's in top class form, kicking points as if he's been doing it all year, as if he's been doing it in his back garden throughout the winter. I mean, top class stuff from Sean Quigley. And he'll be the best player in the pitch, in my opinion. Um, but will that be enough for Fermana to get over the line? I'm not sure. They play that very blanket defence. They get men behind the ball. It's very tough. It's very organised. You've seen in the Derry game, though, they do have defensive frailties and their heads went a bit in the Derry game. And when you have a team like Fermanagh who haven't won too many games over the past couple of years, you do worry that if they fall too far behind, that if Offaly start kicking scores with the likes of Keane Farrell or Bernard Allen or the likes of Rory McNamee, for example, they could lose their heads a bit. And that would be the worry. And I think Offaly will just about edge it or will I? Do you know what? I might go up. 
Do you know what? I'm going to go with Fermanagh to win this game. I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind last minute. I just think Fermanagh are going to frustrate awfully. I think they're going to get men behind the ball. And I think that it's going to be... Oh, I don't know now. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what to go for here. Do you know what? We're going to go for extra time. And this is going to be the first penalty shootout taking place. Because there's been no talk about this. Penalty shootout is going to happen this weekend for Mana and Offaly. You heard it here first. For Mana is going to win on penalties against Offaly and go back to Division 2. So we'll move on to Division 2. We have the relegation playoffs. First of all, we've obviously got Cork going up against Westmead. And we obviously have Down going up against Leash. Uh, Cork and Westmead obviously taking place at Parky Cueve. And of course, the Down and Leash game is taking place at Park Esler. So Cork and Down both having the home advantage there, of course. Cork, for me, against Westmead will be an interesting one. I think Westmead, you know, they I feel like I bigged them up a bit too much after the Mayo and Mead game. They were very well organized, brilliant in defense. Kevin Maguire, brilliant at the back. Um, and obviously, going forward, you've got very talented players in the likes of John Heslin. Fola Ayurinde, who came off the bench at the down game, scored a cracking goal, and he's certainly one to watch for the future for Westmead. And I reckon they will give a couple of problems for Cork here. I think they definitely will because there's pressure on Cork here. There really is. Look, listen, it's not the end of the world if Cork, don't, you know, it's not the end of the world that Cork haven't got promoted to Division 2, but it would be a massive step, step back if they go down to Division 3. If they lose this game, and go down to Division 3. It's just a massive step back for Cork football. And a county like that. With the players that they have. With the underage success. They just can't be taking a step back. Especially with Tier 2 potentially coming in as well. So I think Cork will find a way through Westmead. I think with the likes of Luke Connolly. I think it's imperative that he stays fit. And that he's available for this game. And he's in his best form. Because when he's in his best form. Normally Cork are at their best. John O'Rourke as well. Was very impressive in the Clare game. So I suppose they'll need him to be at his best. And Ian McGuire needs to be winning a lot of ball in midfield for them to stand the chance as well. He's been brilliant for Cork so far in the three games. They're coming in on the back of momentum. They won their last two games and they actually look quite impressive in the clear game. So I think Cork will find a way through Westmead and win by two points. You've then got Down against Leash, and I think Down's win over Westmead may be their biggest win of the season, in my opinion, in terms of just what that means. Because, you know, if they hadn't been playing against Cork, you would fancy Cork to beat them quite comfortably, let's be honest. But they're going up against a Leash team that is just drained on confidence, that's struggling, that can't seem to put wins together, can't seem to do much at the moment. You take Donny Kingston out of the equation, they just don't seem to really have much. And look, listen, Evan O'Carroll's been impressive. I've been impressed with him in the past few games. He was good against Kildare, caused their defence a couple of problems. Gary Walsh is another talented player in, in a full forward. So... You could see them causing a couple of problems for Down and it will be a close game and it's an interesting one because I'd, I'd actually have these two as probably the worst teams in this division. I think if it's an A-team tournament, I think these two go down but it's a massive opportunity for either team to stay up, to right the wrongs of what's been a poor season in the league and go again for next year still in Division 2. I think it would be a phenomenal achievement for whoever wins this game and I think I'm going to go with Down. I really am. I think with Caelan Mooney in there, I think they're going to have too many problems for for Leash, I think defensively they'll be organised. I think they'll frustrate Leash as well. I think Leash have been trained on confidence a bit over the past few games. I think it will be close. There'll only be one or two points in it. It could very well go to extra time. But I'm going to go it down to win by two points. You've then got the Division 2 playoffs. So the Division 2 semi-finals of course. Kildare are taking on Mead at St. Connellets Park in Newbridge. And you've also got Mayo against Clare at Cusick Park. We'll start with Mayo and Clare. I mean, Clare deserve a lot of credit, obviously, for winning their two games. Two out of the three games. Probably should have beaten Cork as well. They were very close in that game. David Tuberty was phenomenal, without doubt. And Clare deserve massive credit, you know. For, for them to be in the situation that they're in, for them to be in a, a promotion playoff to get into Division 1, just shows the amount of work that's been done in that, in that county down the years. And Owen Cleary, David Tuberty... Joe McGann, just very good footballers altogether. And I'll be interested to see how they do against Kerry this year. Look, listen, we all know that Kerry will probably win that game quite comfortably. But I think Clare will cause problems and they'll be defensive and they'll cause issues. And it'll be interesting to see how they do against this Mayo team. We've seen when Mayo went up against Westmead. Westmead got a lot of men behind the ball, made things difficult and frustrated Mayo. And I expect Clare to do the same. And I don't think this will be a whitewash like people think. I think Mayo will have to work for this. They'll have to... Be astute at the back as well because Clare will break with pace 
And I think David Tuberty will cause a couple of problems in there for that Mayo defence, which still doesn't look perfect for me. But Mayo will win this game, let's be honest. They'll find a way to win this game. They'll win it by 4-5 or five eventually. I think with Killian O'Connor and Tommy Conroy, they'll have their best team on the pitch as well because they'll know they need to win this game, build a bit of momentum going into the Connacht Championship before, I think, playing Sligo and, a bit, and Leitrim. So... Yeah, I'm going to go with Mayo to win by four, but do expect Clare to cause one or two problems in this game. You've then got Mead and Kildare obviously taking place at Newbridge. And this is the season in many ways for these two counties. Like, this is the season for both Mayo and Kildare. Like, let's be honest, neither one of these two teams are, of course, going to win the Leinster Championship. I mean, Dublin are just too far ahead. But we're all looking at either Mead or Kildare to potentially be the closest to the two. And I think I've changed my mind about 100 times watching the league this season and watching the championship last year as to who is the closest i actually think these two teams are very much on par in terms of development and in terms of getting back to where they need to be i mean mead they've shown some positive signs this year Killy, uh, killian sullivan has been fantastic i thought at different games james connell obviously came back in the mayo game i was surprised that mead made the changes that they did of course in the in the mayo game you know making 10 changes i thought they would have went full strength and um, as for kildare they're the team for me that has the potential to get closer to Dublin than Mead with the likes of Jimmy Hoyland and Dara Kirwan. They're a big physical team. They look stronger than Mead, in my opinion. I think they're better defensively as well. I know that sounds kind of funny considering uh, Mead can score five goals against them at Crow Park, but I think that was a an absolute capitulation. and I'd be, I'd be surprised to see that happen again. I think that's the only way Kildare lose this game, in my opinion, because... I can see Kildare being defensive and sitting back and breaking with pace. And I think Kildare will pick Mead off and win this quite comfortably. In all honesty, I think they'll win, win it by five or six. Again, the only way for me that Mead could win this game is if Kildare collapse. Because I don't think Mead have too much of a threat in terms of kicking points from 30 or 40 yards. I think they're way too reliant on goals. And I think Jack O'Connor is a very smart manager. He'll see through that. He'll have a game plan coming into this game. And Kildare will win it by five or six. So we'll move on, of course, to the Division 1 relegation playoffs. You've got Armagh versus Roscommon and Monaghan against Galway. The Armagh-Roscommon game, of course, at the Athletic Grounds. And do you know what? I'm going to go with Armagh to get the victory because, you you know, you have to admire the fight and the determination they showed in, in the three games. Um, obviously, floating long balls into Rian O'Neill and Ushin O'Neill, of course, in the in the game versus uh, Donegal. Again, they should have won, and they probably should have won the Tyrone game. I mean, we could be looking at Armagh winning the three games. And they're, they're still a young team. They're still trying to find their way under Kieran McGinney. I mean, McGinney's been there a while, obviously. But in terms of some of the lads in that team, I mean, some of the players have been there a while, like Stephen Campbell and Jamar Hall. But they just haven't been able to, to click into gear to find that next level. And it looked like in different moments in them three games, they were finally going to take it to that next level. And you felt like they had the potential to do it. Ushin O'Neill with one of the points of the year, possibly of the decade. You know, we might not see a better point in this decade after, you know, kicking a point from like 50 or 60 yards or something like that against the Donegal game. I mean, that was absolutely exceptional. So I think Armagh will beat Roscommon. I haven't been convinced with Roscommon, to be honest with you. They've obviously brought uh, Stephen Poacher in. It doesn't really look like it's worked so far, in my opinion. Look, listen, it's, it's a very tough group. You're talking about Kerry and Dublin, the two top teams in the country. And obviously Galway are a very good team as well. So it's always going to be very tough for them. But I'm going to go with Armagh to, to win this one. I think they'll have a bit more momentum. And I think they'll send Roscommon back down to Division 2, winning by two points. You've then got Monaghan and Galway, of course, taking place in Clones. I've backed Monaghan quite a bit, actually, throughout this National League. And um, they've shown some promise. They definitely have. They've shown that they're not as reliant, maybe, on, on Conor McManus that they were in previous years. With Aaron Mulligan coming in there and Rory Woods, who's been impressive, uh, coming in as well. And Conor McCarthy looks like such a dynamic, explosive forward when he gets going and when he's in the mood. You know, they are playing more on the front foot. They're trying to take the game to teams a bit more. They've shown some positive signs. They've shown some signs of, pro signs of progression. But the big worry for me about Monaghan is that they haven't won a game since February of 2020. That's a long time. I think it's like seven games that they haven't won. That they have, You know, you think of the games that they should have won, the games that they should have closed out. They should have beaten Cavan quite comfortably. They had that game within their grasp. They should have beaten Donegal last week. They had Tyrone at one stage as well. So they definitely should have won that game. And, you know, you're thinking back to Monaghan even for Mana two years ago as well. They just 
seem to have this problem when it comes to closing out games and, and winning these big games. And this is now where it matters. You know, you, you win this game, you stay in Division 1, you go into the Fermanagh game. Monaghan then, you know, build a bit of momentum and potentially even make an Ulster final. It's definitely not improbable. So definitely work for Monaghan to do for Galway. You know, they had that terrible start, obviously, against Kerry. Was impressed with them against the Dubs in some ways. I thought they'd done well to contain Dublin. They stayed in the game. They showed a lot more positive signs defensively. Peter Cook, I thought, was bright, quite bright in midfield, uh, who came into the team. So I'm going to go with Galway to edge this one by two points. Um, I've backed Monaghan enough throughout this National League campaign, and I'm, and I'm fed up with doing it. And look, I bet you they'll win this game now. I bet you they'll go and prove me wrong, um, having not won a game for about a year and a half. But... Yeah, I'm going to go with Galway to win by two. We'll move on to the league semi-finals, um, of course, which potentially don't have a final, which makes absolutely zero sense. So it kind of makes you wonder why these games are even taking place. But we'll discuss them anyway. Donegal and Dublin uh, taking place at Kingspan Breffney Park and Tyrone and Kerry taking place at Fitzgerald Stadium. Donegal and Dublin, first of all, is a game that I'm interested to see because it was a game that we all thought we'd have in the All-Ireland semi-finals last year before Donegal very much blew it, you know, when they lost to Cavan. So Donegal and Dublin's going to be interesting. Donegal obviously have injury concerns coming into this game. Um, as we very well know, Michael Murphy, Paddy McBrearty, Neil McGee. There's a lot of defensive Ushing Gallon as well. A lot of, um, you know, injuries taking place there. And it does make you wonder... With the fact that Donegal, even if they win this game, they won't get to play in the league final because obviously they have a championship game coming up against Down. It does make you wonder, will they just play a second string team for, for this game? It honestly wouldn't surprise me because they've had a lot of injuries and it's kind of, it's that situation where you're probably not going to beat Dublin anyway. So put out a second string team, you probably get beat by 10 to 15 points, but it doesn't matter because if you won the game, you get no reward for it anyway, <laughs> you know, so... I, I don't know if Declan Bonner will do that. I suspect he'll probably make a few changes, but he'll still want to test some lads out against Dublin. Like It would be interesting to see how Paddy McBrady would do going up against that Dublin defence. Would it maybe be Mick Fitzsimons who will pick him up or maybe one of the other lads? I'm not sure. So it will be interesting, but I am going to go with Dublin to win it quite comfortably. Um, I do suspect that Donegal will make a couple of changes and I think Dublin will kick into gear a little bit more in this game, in my opinion. I think we found the better midfielder and Pat O'Byrne in there um, with James McCarthy potentially going back to either wing back or playing in the six with John Small injured. So I think Dublin will find a way through Donegal, I really do. I think they'll. I think Donegal have shown a lot of defensive weaknesses in, in there this year so far and I think Donegal or I think Dublin will very much exploit that with Conor O'Callaghan with Cormac Costello maybe Dean Rock comes back in for this game we'll have to wait and see so I'm going to go with Dublin to win it by 7 points you've then got Kerry and Tyrone and uh, I'm going to go with Kerry to win this one by 3 points we're still waiting for Tyrone to click into gear we're still waiting for the magic pieces of the puzzle to fall into place for them to be a potential challenger maybe for the dubs and I suppose we just haven't seen it just yet we really haven't they look like a team that's probably stuck between are they playing defensive are they playing attacking they've still got those same instincts that was built into them from Mickey Hart's era um, and they're obviously trying to play more on the front foot I mean it's not that they didn't play on the front foot under Mickey Hart at times because they certainly did but without doubt, they're trying to they're trying to push up a lot more on kickouts and win more higher ball up the field um, and whatnot as well. So I think Tyrone will cause Kerry a couple of problems, and they're the one team that's better defensively than most teams. You know, you think of Donegal and, and Kerry themselves. Um, I know a lot of people have kind of been a little bit worried about Kerry a little bit. Maybe are they they didn't look the best against Ross Common, but. To be, perfect, to be perfectly honest with you, they knew they were in this league semi-final. They tried different things out. They brought the likes of Tony Brosnan into the team. Stephen O'Brien started. They tried different things out and it didn't look perfect, but it's one of them kind of situations, a bit like Dublin, where they looked in second gear and they never looked like they were playing at their absolute best. I think they'll show up in this game. Could see David Clifford causing too many problems for the Toronto defenders. And I think that will probably alleviate the space for Sean O'Shea to, to get more involved. So... Yeah, Kerry to win by three. But anyway, lads, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for the hurling preview that will be out tomorrow and more podcast interviews as always to uh, follow on the channel. So 
yeah do let me know your predictions down below for me it'll be a dublin and kerry final that won't happen unfortunately unless they meet in the all Ireland final and it's the league and all Ireland final or whatever they're gonna do god only knows but yeah do leave a like subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you later